Good morning, YouTube followers. When I say good morning, it's like Sunday morning. Um, day after with a massive game yesterday. First video I've posted uh, for a while on YouTube, so I apologize for that. Christmas has gotten away. Transfer window has gotten away. Life has gotten away. Um, but I did promise to have a little transfer video released um, to talk about the January window, which is always a, a fun window to be involved in, um, particularly for our football club most years. And obviously there was a lot of apprehension from some of our fans about who are we bringing in, who are we gonna lose, and involving other clubs as well. So I'll keep the video short and sweet and I'll talk you through the process. And I'll Look, the reality was we went into January where we had a lot of injuries in December and early January and players coming back and recovering. But we knew we needed to recruit. We knew still in the summer from our targets in the summer that we were a couple of players short in certain areas that we needed to recruit. And those players' skill sets were necessary for our football club to allow the gaffer to implement other formations a la the one you're seeing at the moment people want to moan and whinge about the diamond but you use what you've got uh, the diamond took us top of the league back in october or whenever it was and unfortunately we didn't have the players the individuals fit or in the club to play the current formation that we're playing at the moment so for us it was key to go out and get we'd gone after brown in the summer we'd gone after schmodox in the summer we'd gone after jack taylor in the summer um, Brown wanted to go to Huddersfield totally understandable championship football really really difficult um, Schmodock's the same we agreed a fee Bristol City came in you're all, as long as you're in League 1 you're always going to lose to a championship football club footballers want to play championship football particularly from League 2 and League 1 so the minute a champ club comes in it becomes really really difficult 99% of the time um, Jack Taylor was a different one we'd seen him pre-season we'd seen him last year he was high on our list, analytics-wise, um, stats-wise, but we couldn't get a deal done with Barnett, and the problem for us was financial fair play. People talk about salary control management protocol, I think that's what it's called, and some people say, oh, it's not true, it doesn't work, but it is true. We get alerted by the EFL all the time when we're at the top. In other words, we can only spend so much within what we turn over as a club. We have X amount of percentage we can spend on football wages and transfer fees and all the bits involved. So to do that deal, for Taylor with Barnett, which was on the table to be done in the summer, couldn't be done because we didn't have the cap room. We hadn't moved the players on, we needed to move on, and the EFL wouldn't have given us permission to approve that deal. So that's football, that's the way it works. I know financial fair play is different in the championship. You can lose 40 million over three years, but in our league, it's 60% of what you bring in is what you can spend on player wages and acquisition costs. So really, really difficult to juggle sometimes. Uh, Josh Knight was, when we brought him on loan, that was at the 11th hour we got permission and squeezed it because we moved someone else on. So as much as people go, you don't sign anyone or why didn't you sign that player? It comes down to sometimes economics, regulations, rules, and those rules are in place for a reason and I'm firmly behind them and I've got no arguments with that. So when the chance arised, obviously in, in January, we moved on Woody. That allowed us then to reach out about Brown. And Danny Cowley was brilliant at Huddersfield, as were Huddersfield to do business with. Um, we took him in, we're paying his wages, and we have an opportunity, possibility, in the summer all goes to plan that Brownie can join us full time. So then obviously we moved on and we Jack Taylor was obviously, you know, a massive target of ours, 21, young and hungry, fits our criteria, um, an absolute uh, star in central midfield, can play anywhere, can play 10. It was just so important to land that one. So again, it was getting around it and doing the financial deal with Barnett. And Barnett were brilliant. Tony Clantos, in fairness to him, he worked with us on that. It took me a week of negotiations with him, how we could figure it into the budget, how we could get it in for the for the financial fair play and to hit our, our salary control management protocol. And we did it. And we spent, obviously, over half a million, going up to a million for Jack, and he's already earning some of those extras for Barnett as we speak. So he's going to be an absolute... Um, excellent acquisition for our football club and he's a brilliant brilliant character so him brownie in the building and then it came to the whole madison saga and that situation where i knew early on in january that there were going to be clubs in for marcus potentially and i've spent four or five years we have as a club with marcus at the club where we've never really had the level of interest or the bids and um, that match his statistics and what he's done in the league and there's obviously reasons for that but this January, I felt with five months to go, I would do my best to finally get him the move to the championship. He's always wanted to play championship football. He doesn't want to be a League One player. He's refused to even look at signing a new contract, talking about a new contract. So it's very clear to me that we as a club had to move on. 
And the other reality was, I think he won player of the month in October. And come November onwards, he wasn't quite the same player he was early on in the season, whether it be illnesses or whether it be, I don't know, focus, whatever it might be. Maybe he was looking at the summer. Maybe he was thinking to himself, you know, I'm on a free in the summer. I don't want to maybe hurt myself. Who knows? Who knows what goes on in footballers' minds? But it wasn't ideal for him and it wasn't ideal for us. So I was at the Burnley game um, where we played in the FA Cup. I got a phone call. It was the Charlton new chairman who phoned me. He wanted to have a conversation about Ivan Tony. I said to him on the phone, look, I'm, I'm watching the Burnley game. I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm, I'm based in London. Why don't we meet during the week um, and have a conversation? So in my mind, I was going into that meeting with Marcus Madison can go to Charlton. And he's gone into that meeting with, we want to get Ivan Tony. So we had a great meeting. Matt's a great guy. I'm sure he'll do great things for Charlton. The fans are lucky to have him with the new owners and everything else. We sat down. He spoke about Ivan. I said, forget Ivan. There's no way he's going to Charlton. You can't afford him. And he wanted a figure. Then he threw figures around. I said, no. I said, the only player that I would be willing to do business on is Marcus Madison. Anyway, myself and Matt agreed a deal. It was a great deal for them and a great deal for us because they were going to get a player where they're obviously in a perilous situation. They need to rise to the table. They need a creator. And he's the type of player that could create for their forwards. So we did a deal. The deal value was guaranteed £1.5 million transfer fee, payable in stages, 500 grand on 50 games, 500 grand on charting getting promoted, which, you know, they stay in the championship and build. It's a big club, every possibility, and a, a sell on percentage. So I got it all in writing. We got it all agreed. He rang his football secretary there and then. They emailed the offer over because it needs to be formalized so they have permission to speak to the player. I left Charlton. I rang Barry. I said, or I left, sorry, the hotel. I rang Barry and said, ring Marcus, his agents. Great news. Um, he's got a brilliant move to Charlton. Big football club, big plans. Um, it's going to be an absolute great move for him, great move for us. In the meantime, I knew from Sammy Schmodick's agent, who I, I know very well and I, I dealt with in the summer, that uh, Lee um, Johnson in Bristol City and Bristol were potentially going to let Sammy out on loan. So we have a good relationship with Bristol City. We spoke to them um, and they just said they had a cup game at the time. Let them get through the cup game. Speak to you then. I rang the gaffer and I said, look, I can get Sammy. I think I can get him in. Um, do you want to do it? Obviously, the gaffer hadn't spoken to the boy since the summer. He wanted to speak to the boy, make sure that he was like focused. He turned us down in the summer. Managers and egos sometimes can be a little bit like that. But the gaffer loved him as a player. So I knew that if I could put that together, it was a great deal. We'd move Marcus on. We'd get over, you know, potentially £2 million for a player with five months left on his contract. So I've left there. Um, Barry can't believe it on the phone. The deal I've told him I've done. Um, he's obviously got the email in the meantime to the club officially giving Marcus permission. I get back to my house within an hour. Barry rings me to tell me that Marcus has told him he doesn't want to speak to Charlton. Um, he doesn't want to go to London. Geography is a big thing for him. He doesn't like the traffic. And he just feels that, you know, he'd got, rather go somewhere else. I can't believe what I'm hearing. I ring the boy. I speak to him for an hour. Um, and I just said to him, you know, this is your chance. This is your opportunity. All those doubters, you can go to the championship. You can, you know, show your stuff, strut your stuff. You know, you're never going to get a better opportunity. And he listed to me on the phone and said, Charlton's not for me. I'd rather go to, I'd go to Birmingham. I'd go north. I'd go here. I'd go there. He starts listing clubs. I'm like, Marcus, none of these clubs are interested. We've spoke to as many people as we can. Um, anyway, cut a long story short. Took me a couple of hours. I managed to convince him to at least see the Charlton manager. So I spoke to Charlton. Lee Boyer, in fairness to him and their director of football, they drove all the way to his house. They spent that evening at his house. I spoke to Marcus Pryor and said, listen, they're coming down, they're doing the effort. The least you can do is hear them out, listen to them. It all went brilliant. Um, the following morning, he came into the club and he said, look, it, it's close. If they're going to hit this figure, I'll, I'll go to Charlton. And he was actually excited about it. So at that stage, we thought, right, we've got a deal. It dragged on for a few days. I spoke to the Charlton chairman. I said, have you got this done? Marcus, is, one of his agents was in LA. The other one was in Spain. Why on earth an agent in January would go on holiday? Eh? Incredible. And... I knew his agent wanted it done because I think his agent represented people at Charlton. So um, it dragged on and dragged on. Matt was quite sure that you know he'd get a deal done with Marcus, but to no avail, Marcus wouldn't go there unless a certain figure was hit. I know his target, I know what he wanted in wages. It was unreasonable, in my opinion, for a player stepping up from League One. They made him a good deal. Um, they probably could have done better, but I think it was, it was good for them. Uh, and I respect that process. And the reality is he didn't go and it dragged on and dragged on. Um, and then Charlton obviously came back a week later. They wanted to redo our deal. 
so they could maybe offer him more. And I said no at that point, you know, because we've agreed a deal. I'm a firm believer when you agree a deal, you agree a deal. But I respect the process. I respect what Charlton were trying to do. They're trying to back their manager. Um, and, and obviously, I let it known out there that Charlton had agreed terms. And in the meantime, in the background, Berman had been on to Barry. Berman and Moffat Barry, close to the million and a half. It was a million plus another uh, half million in add-ons and all the bits and pieces. But the problem with that deal was they didn't want to start paying until the summer. Um, so we went back to Birmingham and said, look, that doesn't work for us. We need um, something now because we've got our own business to do. And um, with financial fair play, we needed that cap room. Um, and then Birmingham came back with a second offer, which was the day of the Wimbledon game. And we felt at that stage, right, great. He'll definitely go there because Marcus, the player, told me himself, oh, I'd go to Birmingham, bloody, bloody, blah. But again, it came down to money. He didn't want to go there. Um, his agents dragged it out. He dragged it out. It wasn't happening. Um, I was disappointed at that stage because I've done everything I can for like four and a half, five years for the boy. Um, he can be high maintenance. I did my best as a young player to bring him through. Now I finally got on two great clubs to go championship football. I thought, game on. The Birmingham thing dragged out. Eventually they pulled out because obviously they tired of the nonsense. I don't blame them for that. Um, and then obviously we got a third club. And again, Marcus made it very clear to us. He wasn't really fussed about going to the third club. He had a certain figure he wanted to hit. He thinks for some reason he's going to get it in the summer because he's free. I don't think he would. Um, we knew then Hull were in. Grant rang us the other day. He was losing two of his best players. He wanted to do a permanent deal. So again, we got Marcus into the club to speak to him. And he was very blasé and said, no, I'm, uh, I, I don't want to go there unless they can hit this amount. Hull couldn't hit that amount. They don't pay those kind of wages like, like the rest of us. And again, we said to Marcus, this is mad. This is a chance. What do you want to do? Spend the next five months sitting there on your ass doing nothing or go play championship football. Myself and Agafra made that decision at the time. He's not going to play for us again. Um, we brought Sammy in. We did the deal with Bristol. Sammy was absolutely so enthusiastic about coming in. We'd moved on now. We didn't want any more of the whole charade. You know, Marcus wanted the championship football. We found it. We did a deal that was beneficial for our club. We did one that was good for him. He was still going to earn tremendous money over three years in his contract. And it was a stage for him to go and show what he can do. We rang every other club in the championship, all the ones that were like linked with him, and none of them were interested in doing a deal for him. So we, we, we presented the best opportunities to the player, and he just sat there and just refused point blank and said, I'll just see my contract out. And at one stage said to me, you can give me some money and I'll leave. You can imagine my head's like a volcano. I'm quite a temperamental character. Uh, I just couldn't believe that this was going on. So on Thursday, before I was flying to Dublin, so I was doing a speech at a former school I went to, I had one last thing up my sleeve. I rang Barry and I said, Baz, we can't let this guy go in the summer and not get anything out of this. And he can't do this to the club and he's not going to do this to me. Not after all the time and effort I've put in. So I said, ring up Hull and say, look, I'll tell you what we'll do. We want a six-figure loan fee. If you sign him in the summer, we want another six-figure fee and we want to sell on. Um, ring out the player up and say he doesn't have to go permanently he can go there for a few months on loan they'll take over his, his wages to then and they'll pay us the fee and if he struts his stuff and does the job i'm sure he'll sign him and they get him in the building and grant's a great manager he'll convince marcus to go there and i thought it's just one way of us to earn money we're not quite getting the one and a half to up to two million that we agreed with charlton that's gone out the window but i managed to save something and get something in and do the business for us as best i could so that was done Thursday night. We were backwards and forwards with the whole people. I was in a hotel in Dublin. Finally approved the deal. He went and got his medical and stuff done on Friday morning. And that's the end of the saga. I don't want to talk about him ever again. I, I've got no time to talk about him ever again. Good luck to him. I hope he does it for Hull. I hope Hull managed to sign him because it's financially beneficial to us. If they don't, I couldn't care less. We're going to move on as a football club. I'm, I'm sick of our club being a one-man show, sometimes a circus. Uh, and we need to be about the team. And there's no I in team. And we need to be about players who are available all the time, players who want to go on the hard away trips to Rotherham, you know, and, and, and not look at it and go, oh, they're quite physical, I don't quite fancy that. All the off-field stuff, we just want to move on. That's what we want to do as a football club. People were having a go at me on Twitter about it. Some people were going, what are you doing? And you said you'd only let them leave. You said, look, we as a club made a decision. I did what's best for our football club. My partners were 100% on board with it. They thought it was unbelievable what I did on Thursday night where we managed to pull and save something out of it. Uh, and it was the right decision for us. Hopefully, it's the right decision for the player. He says he loves football. He said to me one day, playing the championship for, for free. So that all kind of changed when all these clubs became available in January. So I don't know what he feels he's got up his sleeve, but he's now got to go and test himself and do the business there in that league. And, uh, and maybe he will get the outrageous money that he wants to go permanently to a club. So I don't know where he's got that idea from. His agents certainly didn't help. 
during the whole process. I thought they could have been a lot better at what they did, but that's agents for you. They, you know, a lot of them have their own agendas at the time. Um, we move on. As far as we're concerned, we've done incredible business. We've, brought, we've got rid of two players. Alex has gone on loan to Tranmere. Marcus has gone to Hull, both 26 years old. We've brought in a 21-year-old uh, midfielder permanently, Jack Taylor, 23-year-old player in Brown on loan with a possibility to sign, and a 24-year-old absolute little workaholic in Sammy Schmodex that we feel really confident that we can, if all goes well and if Bristol do allow him to move on in the summer, we'll try and do something there. If not, we'll respect that and he'll go back there. But we'd be very happy for him to, to see out the season with us and, and do the business for us like he's doing so far. So the camp is a different place. The atmosphere is a completely different place. The players understand what it's all about. We made it very clear that we weren't selling Ivan Tony. Ivan wasn't happy with that, obviously. You know, he's got clubs that are close to getting promoted to the Premier League. I understand where he and his family were looking at that and going, that's a super move for me. But we made it clear to Ivan that he's our main guy. Um, we've offered him a new contract. We've offered that we don't get promoted. We will sell him in the summer. I want him to win the Golden Boot. I want him to be the EFL player, League One player of the year. I want him to win promotion with us, and then we'll make him a championship player. If we can achieve all of that together, we will do the business, obviously, and we will sell him in the summer. There will be a host of clubs in the summer. So far in this window, there was seven. There was another seven who wanted him but didn't have the cap space on the financial fair play in January, but will in the summertime. There are two Premier League clubs who, if relegated, 100% they will be bidding for Ivan Tony. So he'll have his pick of the bunch in the summer to go to. We'll do the business as best we can. And if we're for some reason in League One, Touchwood, we're not. We, we will use that and we'll rebuild and we'll go on again. So we're in a good place as a football club. The coaching staff, the team, everyone's together. We've had a really, really good window. January is usually really messy for us, but we've had two out and three in. We've had good characters come in the building. We've got Nighty back who's fit. We've got Dembele on fire after his broken hand and his red card. We've got Thompson who's looking like an unbelievable player in a back three. We've got Joe Ward back in the team. We've got players fresh. We've got Blake Tracy coming back. So we've got a lot of those players that were injured that are now fresh for the run-in. A lot of them haven't played even 10 games. So as legs get tired late in the season, as March and April comes around and the, and the, and the pitches get heavy, you're going to have that pace and you're going to have that 12, 13K a game from a lot of our players now on our team. So we're really looking forward to that. Um, it's been a testy time. It's been a tough time. Um, but we've never lost you know, that faith in what we're trying to do as a football club. We just knew that tough times don't last, tough people do. Uh, and we've got one of the best in the manager we have in the staff, and they've kept a level head through the whole process. So we're really excited to see where the season goes. Whether we get there, we don't get there, we'll see. But as a football club, we're in a brilliant spot. We've got the stadium on the horizon. We've got a new stadium possibly on the horizon. My partners are doing a magnificent job with all of that. They've been so supportive throughout this whole process. They were like absolutely refusing to sell Ivan in this window. Uh, and I'm with them on that. It was so important to keep him till, till the end of the season. So we've got a, a batch of young teenagers in our squad that we're not letting them out alone either because we feel the experience for them, the intensity of training at the moment, the possibility of a playoff campaign and being involved in all of that will be so invaluable for Harrison Burroughs, Barker, Cartwright, Canu, um, Tazdemer. You know, we've got, and, and Ricky J. Jones, who's been unbelievable in his little cameos when he's come on. So it's been a really funny window, um, but a good one. And deadline down in Ireland, I'm giving a speech, and I told everyone I was incommunicado, and I still get a phone call off someone from Sky. They wanted me to come on again after Wednesday, because at the last minute, they got a tip that if Josh King goes from Bournemouth to Man United, Bournemouth wanted Ivan Tony. So I said, look, revisit that in the summer and ask me the question again. But like I said all along, you know, we're shut for business come Friday. Uh, the other club who made four offers talked about probabilities and percentage chances of us getting promoted. I hope they go up because obviously I love their model. Um, myself and their director of football had a great banter backwards and forwards with all their offers. He said to me that I was the kind of negotiator could have, that could have solved Brexit. That's what he said at the end in, in humour. And, um, and I just said to him, look, I want you guys to go up and down the road we may do business again. But it just wasn't going to happen in this window. And I know he was the number one target because of the multiple amount of offers. And he came to the club on the night we played Wickham to try and get a deal done. And I think he realised then that I was just not going to do a deal. So um, so that's really it in a nutshell. It's been, I wouldn't say it's been the most exciting transfer window out there. I don't think there's been any standout business. I think Bowen's a good deal for West Ham. I think United with Fernandes is a great deal. I'd have loved my Liverpool to have done a couple of bits and pieces, but they've had a quiet win on the summer and a quiet win on now, but they're probably going to end up as champions and, and on record points tally, and 
who are we to know? You know, a club like that goes out and wins the league, does what they've done at the moment without bringing hardly any players in in, in the summer, and now maybe it's the way of the future. We're certainly hoping with the last couple of windows, with the building we're doing and the acquisitions, that we don't have to keep going out and bringing in seven, eight, nine new players, which is just ridiculous for a football club. And it, I would love a summer where we only have to bring in four or five, and it's like slight cosmetic surgery to your squad. But we've reduced the age of our squad tremendously this window, definitely last summer. We're going to be younger. Um, we're having more people from the academy coming through. We've now got Flynn Clark as back to fitness and signed his first pro deal. We're very excited about him joining Ricky uh, and Harrison and Kyle and Sam in the first team squad. So we're going to have potentially six to seven out of our 23-man squad next year will be all homegrown graduates from our youth academy. The youth under 18s won their first league title in 25 years. That was massive for us as a club. Kudos to Kieran, to Matthew and Simon. They've done a terrific job. Um, and, and it's very exciting there what we're doing the stuff Jason's working on as regards to the dome that we're building and trying to get our category up to category cat 2 from cat 3 again that's only going to make us stronger in, in the youth department so and then finally to end it on is I think season tickets are coming up soon for renewal so we're hoping our fans back us we're hoping to smash records and we're hoping people are seeing it with one eye on the championship and um, you know I'm sure they'll moan about our prices as usual but we're trying to buy a stadium, we're trying to build a new stadium, we're trying to build a young, exciting squad, we're trying to spend more money in our academy. You know, we ask our fans to look at that, that if we charge you more, you know, if you're paying more for your ticket, that's really, at the end of the day, to help the football club. It's not to help us, this is a, a project we're, we're involved in, and there's a lot more exciting stuff coming up, and I'll do another video in a few weeks based on one of the exciting projects we're doing in football. It's, it's outside of Peterborough, but it's to do with Peterborough United, so it's just about expanding our model and what we're going to do so great window i hope it all went really well for the fans i don't want to talk about the results the last few results or you know the wins the losses and whatever else because this is about transfers and about deals and getting deals done um it's been fun and uh, like every window is and um, you never know what comes out of nowhere and um, deadline day we had another phone call about another one of our quick young players and again we turned down a serious bid for them so we as a club probably could have taken easily 10 to 12 million this window we refuse to because we want to back the manager and the team. We hope that pays off. We hope the fans understand that and appreciate that. That's where we want to be as a football club. We don't want to lose our best players. We're sick of losing our best players. And if we do, it's got to be for a king's ransom. So let's look forward. Let's enjoy the last 14, 15 games um, plus and give it our best shot. Um, that's all we can try and do. That's what we're trying to do. It's all about wanting to be a championship football club. And uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Please retweet. Please uh, pass on to people to subscribe to. There's going to be more videos coming. And uh, as I said to you, it's been fun. And I'll speak to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye-bye.